August is over and just as quickly the meta has taken a few dizzying shifts, but before we get into that, let's summarize what went down and where it all went wrong. The first three parts of the summer event were about as expected, with alts of the usual popular picks filling out the banner spots. First, a double pickup with Ryza number four and Resna number five, then single pickup Val number four and single pickup Claudia three. They were fairly safe choices with mainstream appeal and decent but not broken kits, so all in all a reasonable starting point. The event itself was unremarkable, just a fluff story and various convoluted ways to get the multiple types of event currencies, including a score battle, a boss battle, a dungeon with an emphasis on fast clears, and three time-gated systems that ticked in real-time or reset in real days. It might sound like a lot, but with the 40-day event duration and fairly generous amounts given out, the summer materials ended up being the most abundant ever thus far. And so, we burned through the idle days of summer, waiting for the big moment, be it some development and climax to the event story, or the unveiling of less conventional or less represented characters. never came, and honestly, this was the most disappointing summer event I've experienced in a gotcha. What we got instead was, as the last banner, the game's first banner with zero pickup characters, and only a single pickup memoria. Even a dreaded Tao would have at least been a better show of effort, have no idea how they could drop the whole thing so bad. Making things worse were the specifics of that Memoria, which had the new highest 36% M attack stat distribution that debuted just two banners before on Summer Val's Lightning Skill Damage Memoria. Except this time it only required the wearer to be an attacker instead of any specific attribute, and the crit damage effect scaled to 100%, where the previous attribute locked crit damage Memoria only went up to 85 so they basically power crept all previous magic memoria in the game, including one newly released just two banners ago, and the former best generic magic memoria that they were rerunning concurrently in a paid-only banner. In light of the upcoming anniversary, which would likely bring its own shifts in power, there was a lot of concern and skepticism about what to make of the abrupt power creep. What was there to stop this memoria from also being made obsolete in a few weeks' time? But wait, it gets even worse. Summer Part 4 introduced a new event shop, using coins obtained from a new event dungeon that sold 200 pieces for every character you owned. Sounds pretty good, but the catch is that the coin rate was extremely low and getting bonus tickets required, wait for it, up to three copies of the new banner Memoria. You'd get a base five tickets per 10 stamina spent, and this increased by one per copy of the memoria your party was wearing, up to a max of three, giving you up to an extra 60% earn rate of pieces. With the ongoing two X to all drops, coal and orbs, plus tickets for the earlier summer score and boss battles, this was easily the best time so far to dump stamina. So there was heavy pressure to cave in and roll the no effort PNG to make the most of it. TLDR, instead of adding any of a number of characters people were hoping for, they pushed a banner with a sole must-have memoria that rendered worthless all the old and not-so-old magic memoria that people spent gems, medals, crystals, and actual cash on, and skewed the rewards of the first-ever farmable peace event heavily in favor of people who had it. We hated it and what it represented, but we rolled and sparked it anyway. The silver lining is that, if you're one of the people who haven't invested in Magic Attacker Memoria yet, like global players with months of advance warning that this is coming, you'll have a relatively good chance to fix this all in one go. Anyway, that concludes the Summer Salt segment, so let's move on to a quick look at the actual peace farming process. If you weren't aware, for as long as you could retire from dungeons for free, there's been a trick you can use to optimize the yields of your dungeon runs. The trick is to run the dungeon manually, watch what you looted and retire before clearing the last fight if the drops weren't to your liking, 
thereby ensuring that your stamina or tickets were only spent if you got something good. This is, of course, incredibly time-intensive, so in most cases in the past it wasn't actually worth doing unless you were some crazy low-resource min-maxer. But this time the tickets and desired drops were hard to come by, and the shop had an effectively infinite quantity of items that were normally time or gem-gated. On any given run you had about a 75% chance of getting no coins at all, but could get up to a maximum of 15 coins, a huge disparity between failed and good runs. Compiling data from actual run counts, the numbers are like this. By doing manual runs and resetting if you don't get coins, you end up with almost four times as many coins for the same number of tickets, an absurd difference. Factoring in the bonus tickets from having three Memoria copies on top of that, you're saving 84% stamina versus fast clears and no Memoria. The actual runs were fairly fast and hands-off, with coins only dropping from the last node right before the final boss, so you would just let it auto up to that, then manually loot it, and either reset or auto the last fight. Of course, the bottleneck for manual runs is the effort you're willing to put into doing them, so ultimately I had to burn the majority of my tickets through fast clears. This truly was the monkey paw version of a peace farming event, with rewards skewed heavily in favor of certain groups, while casual players got a disappointing amount, on the order of one day worth of peace quests. On the plus side, it'd be pretty easy to fix the whole thing by just increasing the average drops per run, so maybe if they ever run this concept again, it'll be a bit better. Anyway, in summary, the whole 40-day affair was quite dissatisfying, squandering one of the golden events for most gacha games with an offering of few and predictable characters, introducing the game's first banner with zero pickup characters, casting shadows of uncertainty, doubt, and buyer's remorse with sudden memoria power creep, and ending with an event dungeon that dangled generous rewards, but barred most from actually acquiring them besides hardcore grinders and pay-to-win through dismal currency rates. It was, to put it mildly, bad, indefensibly, inexcusably bad. Really? The only thing saving it was the first anniversary lead-up kicking off about a week before it even ended, with strong main story content and a bunch of long-awaited QOL. Looks quite promising overall and I'm at least slightly reassured. Cancel the Doom posts and boycotts. But I'll save the discussion of the post-summer stuff for a separate time. For now, you've been warned, don't panic, all will be okay, probably. Thanks for watching.